Joining us right now live is my good friend Donald Trump. Donald, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Thank you, Michael. How are you? Donald, I know that you're pulling for uh, Mitt, and frankly, I think he's the only electable Republican out there, and I've been saying so for months, but I'm very worried. Well, before we go into the politics, let's be friends again and talk about that. I put a picture of my dog, Teddy, myself and yourself, <laughs> up Good. on the top of my website. Remember we Good. took that picture Christmas Eve at uh, Mar-a-Lago, Mar Donald? You were... Yeah. Gorgeous picture, by the way. Good. Gorgeous <laughs> nice. picture. Gorgeous picture. Instead of a white sport coat and a pink carnation, it's a yellow sport coat and a gray poodle. Yeah, it's very nice. So, Donald, we know Mitt Romney is the only electable Republican. We know that there's a disgrace out there in, in the form of some of the other candidates, truthfully. Right. But yesterday, Romney goes on CNBC and says that he's going to say nothing outrageous about the president, and he's going to respect them. How in the heck is he going to excite the base with that kind of moderate approach? Well, I've been watching the campaign very closely, as you know, as you have, for the last uh, four or five months in particular. And I've gotten to know him very well. He's a, he's a very good guy, but I'll tell you, he's a tough cookie. And I believe that he will be very, very strong. I think when he gets the nomination, he's going to be an amazing candidate. And, you know, I don't know what his definition is when he gives you that definition, but I think he's going to be very, very strong and very tough. And he'll be very much opposed to what's happening with this president. I think he's well, but will he actually talk? Him. But, Donald, will he actually speak about the gross corruption that we the people see on a daily basis? I believe the he will. I believe he will talk. I mean, come on, let's face it. You've got $500 million missing with Solyndra. Where did that investigation go? Right. There are so many others like that, Donald, and nobody seems to be following these things up. I think he will be very, very strong, and I've seen it. I watched Florida, where he was looking like it wasn't going so good, and he had to win Florida. I watched the debate, and by the way, Newt is a great debater, but Newt lost both of those debates, and it wasn't close. And I've watched him under pressure. I've watched Mitt mm. Romney under pressure, and he really has done an amazing job. And I think he'll do the same amazing job when it comes to the election. And I will say this. If gas prices go up to 5 and 6 and $7 a gallon, and all of the drivers and motorists out there are paying, uh, you know, most of their salary for to OPEC, I think that, I think he's going to have a fantastic chance of winning this election. You know, Donald, I pointed out in my new book, Trickle Down Tyranny, which isn't even out yet, and I heard this soundbite in the Romney campaign a month ago. Maybe they got an advanced copy. Do you know that our U.S. Navy has the smallest number of ships since World War One? Well, that's OK. Fair. And that that's a fact that I put in my book and I don't know where they got it from. But, Donald, you're an economics guy. Do you know that this administration has removed energy and food prices from its financial analysis yeah. in order to avoid telling the American people just how bad inflation is? You probably know that, correct? I have. I do know that. I and do I'll, know that. Yeah, but if they actually put food and energy prices into the financial analysis and talked about inflation, wouldn't it be much worse than Obama's reporting? Well, what about if they had to put interest payments on $16 trillion? What about if they put interest payments? I mean, when you think about this, we're paying the lowest interest. The best thing he's got going is interest rates are so low that our debt is, you know, not really being reflective of what normal interest rates would be. What happens when interest rates start to go up and we're paying all of this interest on all of this money that we're borrowing? That's a bigger cost than anything, including including the food and everything else. I mean, the interest money, the interest payments that we'll be making, Michael, when the rates go up to 2%, 3%, 4%, are going to be astronomical. And that's going to be downfall if something's not done about it quickly. Donald, you know, I had dinner with Mitt Romney two years ago before he announced his run. He's a very nice man, very intelligent man. I certainly would back him. Of course, since then, his advisors have told him to avoid the savage nation, which is a disastrous mistake for him, because if he can't excite the independent conservative base, he's not getting elected. And if there's anything I could implore you, beg you even to tell him, he's got to understand that if he listens to those middle of the road advisors the way McCain did, he's going to go by the way of McCain. Yes, he will get the Republicans. Yes, he will get some of the independents. Yes, he will get some of the fiscally conservative Democrats. But without the Tea Party base, without the conservative base itself, meaning they won't come out for him, he's got to talk the talk, and he's got to tell the people exactly what he's going to do as president. He can't speak in platitudes. I think you agree with me. 
Well, I do agree, and I, I will say this. I'm surprised that he won't do your show, and I would like to talk to him about that because you've been a fan of his for a long time, actually, and I know you'd like to see certain things coming out that maybe aren't coming out, but he's a very conservative guy. He's a very strong guy, and I think he'll run a great campaign, but I want to speak to him about doing your show. Let me see if I can get him on your show, okay? Yes, Donald, I want to ask you something else. If he is in the final campaign against Obama, meaning he wins the primary, which I pray he wins all of them tonight, and that it's over, are these other clowns going to get out of the way? Oh, at some point they have to. You know, it's gotten to a point where it's absolutely ridiculous, Michael. I was saying a month ago and two months ago, it's okay, it's good, it's toughening up both Mitt and everybody else, frankly, but I said it's okay, and we're talking about him, we're talking about them instead of talking about the president. But right. now it's at a point where it's enough already. They've got to now choose their candidate, and it's going to be Mitt, and the, the other people just have to clear out. You know, they have well, to lose. They, it's easier said than done, because these the PAC money is so phenomenal, I don't think they're going to walk away. Michael, a guy like Santorum has nothing to lose. What does he have to lose? He's got nothing else to do. He was run out of office by the largest margin in the history of the <laughs> modern-day U.S. Senate. So he goes and he, 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 I mean, before he had any PAC money, he was just going from place to place. He's flying commercial airliners, and he's going and, and he's campaigning. What does he have to lose? I mean, these guys... Uh, Donald, to... your greatest line about Santorum was a month ago. I laughed hysterically when you said, here's a guy, it's like he dropped out of high school and wants to enter Wharton School, the Wharton School of Business. I love that line. Well, it's true. I mean, he flunked out of high school. The man lost in Pennsylvania by the largest margin in the history of modern-day Senate, <laughs> 18 to 19 points, and now he's running for president. I don't understand. In other words, the people threw him out of Pennsylvania, and he said, okay, I got thrown out, now I'm going to do that. And I do give that analogy because it's like being thrown out of high school and then wanting to go to Wharton, which is probably the hardest school to get into. So I really, I really am somewhat offended that he's even running because you know I agree I agree I mean he's going to talk about prophylactics next next as as a key, as a key campaign point Michael he's gotten the conversation onto things that are going to absolutely destroy the Republican party in the general election Donald Trump I really appreciate you taking time out today I know that you're backing Mitt tell him we wish him the best of luck from the savage nation and my my listeners want to hear from him well, I will do that, and I will actually mention that to him. You've been a great guy and a great friend, and I look forward to seeing you at Mar-a-Lago. And Teddy says woof. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Donald Trump.